reinforcement make it clear that this area is of high value to the Duergar. Vases of fresh water are stored in the top of the The deepest furnace room stores the most valuable mining supplies.
Those leather tops should be glad to hear of it. Scaffolding and heavy reinforcement make it clear that this area is of high value to the Duergar. tell whether this area was recently destroyed or has never been completed. This tucked away cave entrance has etchings on the doorway that read, For the Devourer. Durgar confesses that the keys to the lighthouse, the scrag, a band of sea trolls, have infested these caverns. The caverns and mushrooms twist and turn into a veritable maze. A large cavern looms ahead. The tops of giant mushrooms form a rough series of platforms. Shaman curses you as you approach.
A cavern opens before you. The stems of giant mushrooms are rooted in the ankle-deep water. stand before you, locked and barricaded. Footprints lead off to your left. The lighthouse door lies the deadly water <laughs> The Durgar ringleader has failed. With Ataraxia freed, Sikros will go blackmail. This tucked away cave entrance has etchings on the doorway that read, For the Devourer. One of Haywire's trademark speaking stones is embedded in the wall here. It appears to be beckoning you. speaking stone. Maybe Vale was right. It's probably a bad idea to salvage the Marut.
watching over the crest and that means they're watching you. to the east. 
the battle-scarred Marut pounds against the door, threatening to bring down the center of the room, his right arm gleaming in the light. It appears that the genius inventor has experimented on himself. seems to cause the walls in here to sweat profusely. Elementals meander between the pillars of earth and the pools of lava in this cavern. The heat here is almost unbearable. The musty odor of burning insects is Chanting appears to come from the other side of the large ironbound slope. The rooms to either side probably contain the open mechanism. priest begins an incantation to summon him.
Dwarven guards are on both sides of this gateway. behind the doors here. This must be the barracks. What appear to be the officer's quarters flank the locked steel door. The clan warden awaits you in this room. The cages behind him hold what appear to be large metallic dogs. Statues of brown dwarves line the wall within this room. at attention before this the king's chamber a sword hangs suspended beneath a magical dome at the center of this room but the hard gaze of the man standing behind it draws your attention
by the molten lava, blazing fire elementals patrol the caldera. Tempest's spine rises into the clouds. A molten ring surrounds the base of the spire, and entrances scar the cliff face. Here in the belly of the mountain, drow huddle together ahead, proof that they have returned to work with the giants. Deep imprints betray the presence of patrolling giants. To the left, the massive metal gateway. To the right, the tunnel turns sharply. Four lock approaching the crystal box has triggered some mechanism within the iron golem. The big <laughs> final signal crystal ignites, revealing a portal into an unknown area of the mountain, lair of fire and ice. The barrier blocks the way to a treasure chest, and an oddly shaped heat spreads along the floors and up the walls. The sound of rushing lava resounds all about you in this cavern. Bitterly cold air rolls across the floor and funnels into the passages and the section of the cabin. Fire shall burn as long as ice has form. Entering the treasure room, you spy two chests in an ancient room. Lair of fire and ice. A deep hole offers no sign of egress, although a soft, cool breeze can be felt coming from below. Peering over the edge, you realize that a fall from this height would be devastating, if not deadly. Peering over the edge, you realize that a fall from this height would be devastating, if not deadly. Cold air funnels through the opening in the cavern. The crisp air is laden with the giants. The ground and the head are only resting from their labors. 
drow scorpions and rust monsters guard this room. The sealed door across from the entrance was recently used. A sudden breeze swirls the dust in this dim chamber. You stumble, you spot a corpse in the grass near the abandoned cart. From down the road, you hear the sounds of harsh growl. The soldier looks up at you, his face strangely pale. Halt! You hear howling in the distance. A raven cries somewhere overhead. someone put so many scarecrows to guard a road in the middle of the forest? What do these strong men do? You hear a branch snap behind you. Voices, ragged and carping, come from the other side of the wind. Peasants with joyless faces and vacant eyes wait in a line. An indistinct murmur passes among the rest of these peasants and old woman's The old woman's voice grows cold. Aye, they were here yesterday. 
wanted pies and had the coin. I told them to go home, but did they listen? A wolf howls in the distance. Its cry echoed first here and there. The wind whispers treacherously among the other clouds. Those are not pebbles filling the urn between the megaliths. They are human teeth. This corpse is nearly beyond recognition. So savagely has it been mangled by wolves. <laughs> Thank you. 
The ghost's story appears. Morgantha addresses the gathered peasants. No, the old woman sneers. You layabouts will try and rob me blind or tear the place apart looking for the pies we haven't got. Morgantha looks down at you. You poor misguided soul. You thought that they did not know? Morgantha howls. Enough of this. Kill him. Now, for the pie makers within the windmill. Mad cackling comes from upstairs as a dredge climbs, fully formed. Out of the Catches fire, filling the windmill with billowing, choking smoke. It is time to go. Small distant voices spring from nowhere. We're so hungry. Find us. Here we are. You spot something in the middle of the room. Something small and old and forgotten. We're tired. We've been here so long. We want to rest. 
Take us to a nice place to rest. We're tired. We want to rest now. We found a secret door. It leads down to the basement, where the monster is. Beyond the secret door, a dusty stairwell leads down into darkness. Gently place the bones inside the coffins. Much better. The distant voice seems pleased. We can rest here. Once you get rid of the monster in the basement. the desk you find a tarnished key. The monster's around here someplace. You can smell him. He stinks. Chanting echoes from down the hallway. Robed apparitions surround the altar, chanting, He is the ancient. He is the one. The ghostly chant suddenly changes. One must die. One must die. Lord Gotha Decaya, we awaken thee. The robed figures vanish, and something stirs in the water. The creature collapses. A little voice in the darkness says, You got rid of the monster. Good. Time to sleep. Ooh. Good night. There's a sudden gust of air, as if the entire building let loose a sigh.
Madam Eva's words echo in your mind. An artifact. A trap. A friend. But will you know which is which when you find it? Swells of organ music, fraught with defiance, determination, and despair, greet your ears and fill the corridor ahead. As you step into the dining hall, the music abruptly halts. The stern, regal man turns to face you. <laughs> Please, come in, my honored guests. I am, of course, Count Strahd von Zarovich, your host. Strahd's laughter echoes across the hall, and his form dissolves into mist. The door slams shut. It's a trap. The portrait of Strahd here is amazingly lifelike. In fact, as you stare, his image begins to move. As Strahd's portrait fades further from the sea, the doors to the east and west swing open, offering two new avenues of exploration. You have found an ally within Ravenloft. If Esmeralda had not told you of the ward barriers around the castle and the keystone needed to escape them, finding the icon of Ravenloft would be all for naught. It only takes a little cunning to trick this poor creature out of its key. You tell yourself it was for the greater good. As you touch the barrel, black ooze begins to spurt from it. The liquid congeals into globs and surges toward you. A sense of peace washes over you as you hold the icon of Ravenloft in your hands and stow it securely in your pack. A blackened ironclad skeletal warrior turns to face you and emits these words in a booming voice. Flee this place, strangers, or become bound to it as I am for all eternity. Under your onslaught, the captain's bones collapse with an audible sigh. Perhaps this time his spirit will finally be free of Strahd's control. You find the ward keystone under a loose stone slab, just as Esmeralda promised. Merely touching the stone should allow you to pass through the wards at the top of the North Tower. But first, you will need to find a portal to take you there.
An intricately carved brazier lights this space with a flame that seems to give off no heat. Metal statues regard the flame. In a flash of fire, you are teleported. There is a spiral staircase across the room, suggesting you are in one of the castle towers. A great rumbling shakes the floor, coming from below. With the keystone in hand, you step through the castle wards unhindered. You check your bags. Sure enough, the icon of Ravenloft is still there. You have done it. With a sigh of relief, you wonder if you will cross paths with Esmeralda again. You have returned to Castle Ravenloft, this time uninvited. As promised, the servant's door was not sealed, a sign that Jesper the Raven made it this far, at least. Jesper's last report says he went off to steal a potion from a coven of witches, whose lair is at the top of the South Tower. This is the South Tower Stair. Following it all the way to the top should get you close to the lair of the Old Thrones mentioned in Jesper's journey.
As you come to the door of the witch's den, you recall the password from Jesper's journal. You whisper. The words and the door fade. Many sets of green eyes shine out at you from the darkness. They regard you with a haughty aloofness that only one creature can The withered forms of two hags glare at you from across their cauldron. One of them, the taller of the two, gestures for you to speak with her. The old witches cackle, then one of them sneers at you. We know about your little bandits. Baba Lysaga warned us of their spying ways. So we set a trap, and just like that, in he flew. Faced with the murder, he stumbled with continuous. You little bird, lack those now in the dungeons with our eldest. Soon, all its secrets will be ours, and then we'll feast. Her gaze lingers on you, and she licks her lips. Such a little bird, little sister. I think we need more meat for our pot, don't you? The cauldron's fiery heat abates. These vile crones have uttered their last curses. It is time to search their lair. You find a set of vials, which must be the potions of gaseous form described in the journal. They will allow you entry into the magical tower within the treasury. Swirling forms of ghostly light drift through this dungeon. Their tormented cries fill you with dread. They seem content to ignore you, for now. Broken furnishings lie scattered about the room. At the center of the destruction is the smashed remains of a moldering cake. Its sickly sweet smell permeates the wreckage. You quaff the witch's brew, and you watch as your body evaporates into a fine mist. By strength of will alone, you push yourself through the tiny tower window and take solid form again. The tower seems to be bigger than the inside somehow. It is filled with treasure. But a heavy footsteps serves as a warning that it does not lack for guards. This book's pages are brittle with age, and much of it is illegible. What you can make out suggests the author is none other than Strahd himself. Perhaps your allies back in town can make sense of it.
edge of the Stone Reach Market, a pensive form scans the thronging crowd. She is searching for heroes. Heroes able and willing to face an unknown foe in the ancient ruins of Giant Hole.